Here we go. Father God, thank you for a, such a great day. Thank you for this warm weather. Father, we pray that um, our viewers are able to receive from this message we're about to deliver. To deliver. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. What's up, beautiful people? Shell and Aaron. Here at A Radical Relationship, and we are back this week with another video. This week, we're hoping to kind of bring you all alongside us in a recent journey uh, that we've had, particularly more so Aaron. <laughs> it's our journey because we're yeah. together, but it focuses specifically on um, a certain part of his life. Um, so we were kind of brainstorming here about what we wanted to talk about. And I was just thinking about how oftentimes it's just really hard to discern God's will for you in different seasons. Um, and I think that in this particular season that we're going to discuss, we've done a pretty good job of of just not only relying on God, but just being content in the circumstance. Um, so true, true, true. Yeah. So let's just bring you along for the journey. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, Aaron's journey of finding a job, getting a job, <laughs> and we can talk about, you know, the success of starting the business now and just feeling super encouraged about that answer from God. But I, I want to give all of you the backstory because it's easy to celebrate with us, right? When it's like, amen, praise God. But like, it was a journey <laughs> and we always want to be just super real with y'all, super vulnerable, super transparent about what the journey is like, not just what the success is like or in the answer prayer so yep i encourage all you men to find a strong woman of god that brings out not just the best in you but um i guess better than the best because I, I i thought i knew um there she is i thought i knew it was best for me but um and then you know shell coming alongside me encouraging me um has kind of showed me that that's not true <laughs> so, yeah thanks for bringing out the best of me <laughs> you know i'll do what i can so this particular journey actually started um before we got married at the time aaron was yeah. working for the um christian addiction recovery nonprofit that no, he had gone generous. through yeah and so um he had gone through the program committed to being on staff for a year after that and then he was coming up on that year mark anyway but our wedding um i guess was happening within a time frame yeah. that kind of interfered and so there was this like okay well what's going to happen typically people in his position stay on campus with the guys is there going to be a position for him um in a capacity that works for him living off campus once he gets married that was kind of the first thing. And then <laughs> that first wave went like, well, you know what? Why don't you just go ahead and leave the position? Yeah. And so that was kind of the first thing that threw us off because we weren't anticipating him leaving earlier than expected. We were just anticipating trying to figure out what to do after. And so all of a sudden we were hit with this like, okay, months in advance of what we expected he was now without a job and without a place to But it was it. cool, though, because it gave us time and allowed us to have this uh, extra time to, like, plan for the wedding and to find a house. And I was able to do all these things while Shell was working. Mm -hmm. um, so that, it helped. It all, like, it all worked out. And, uh, I mean, after the fact, I thought, I was like, I got to work. I got to get a job, you know, trying to find a job. Um, but God was just, like, shutting doors, like, all of them. All yeah, <laughs> well, even before that, though, so initially, though, when that happened, I remember you having these feelings of, like, kind of feeling pushed out, kind of feel like, why is this happening oh, this yeah. way, you know? So talk a little bit about that. I just want people to understand just the wrestle that comes with the entire journey. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, was, I felt a little discouraged, um, but I also see the, the their side of it, too, you know? Um, just being there and, um, you know, pouring out my heart 
and truly giving my heart to that ministry. My, and I still go out there and I still associate with them and um, go talk to the guys at the Hope House and stuff. But um, yeah, it, it kind of hurt a little bit because they I feel like they were just kind of kicking me out. Um, and I was like, just because I'm getting married. So that was, I, I wasn't really like understanding hmm. that. But then, then I kind of started to understand, you know, because um, the CEOs both were leaving. One of them was stationed overseas, the other one moved um, out of state. And they wanted most of the guys there to be guys that are going to live on campus. And, mm-hmm. that, you know, being married, I wasn't able to do that. Um, but it, it was also encouraging. But they, you know, told me, he was like, uh, man, this is just a stepping stone for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, a, he's like my spiritual father, strong man of God. Um, he's always been really encouraging. But, yeah, he was right. It was just a stepping stone because, like, man, I would not picture myself today where I am currently last year. Yeah. <laughs> I would never, like, it's just crazy. God, um, man, he, he'd be throwing curveballs. Yeah, so one thing that I'll say about about that and just Aaron's perspective on it is that sometimes God will force you out of positions in order to thrust you into his greater plan for you. And at the time, it feels like, you know, why is this happening to me? Why am I being put in this position? Why am I being uprooted? Why is my reality or the plan that I foresaw um, being shattered, you know? But it was it was you know, a loving parent that God is saying, man, I got better for you. And it's going to hurt a little bit because of the discouragement and, you know, the way that it happens. But like, it's because though I have better plans. You were always encouraging because I was the one feeling kind of down and, oh, we're about to get married. I ain't have a job. And Mm -hmm. you were like, but look, babe, it's opening all these doors for you to do this and this. Yeah. So, um, Yeah. yeah, definitely. We've definitely been faithful mm-hmm. through some tough circumstances. Mm. And so then a job hunt began. Oh. <laughs> and you can tell them how that was going. Like just getting turned down job after job after job, um, which I'm thankful for now because I realized I would have been completely miserable doing any of these jobs. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, like that wasn't what God had in store for me. And I think in one of the previous videos, I always said, God wants better for you than you can imagine for yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm sitting here thinking like, man, God wants this for me. This is what I'm going to be doing. And then he's like, no. And I'm just like, okay, well, what is it then? You know, what is it then? And then I found out, you know, um, through getting turned down from those jobs, I had a background check a mile long, um, which I was able to get cleaned up. Um, I was able to get all those things expunged off my record. Um, so praise God for that. You know, it's the little things. Um, so yeah, it sucked getting, uh, turned down and whatnot and getting let on, but I'm, I'm taking what I can out of it. I'm taking that portion out of it. Like, okay, that's preparing me for my future. Now I know yeah. this, now I can take care of this. Cause if I'd not, um, applied for this specific job, um, I would have never known that. Yeah. And, and it wasn't just like, getting turned down in one specific scenario it was also like being drug along only to be told that like actually this isn't going to work like all the buildup of anticipation 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 of like hey yeah (laughs) and so i remember the day that he had that conversation with um that organization he was just really crushed like man i should have had this in the bag like i'm more than qualified it's right up my lane it's right up my alley you know and that wasn't it. <laughs> and so um, closed doors are answers too. And I think that we don't always want to necessarily look at it that way. We can often look at it as closed doors just being dis- discouragement when you may have been praying, you know, for God to make it clear or for God to open and shut doors and for him to let you know his good and perfect will. And then he closes the door and we like, <laughs> we can't get past it. But it's like that that's an answer to your prayer as well. If you're praying for God to show you what his plan is and that door closes, then then that's an answer that that door is not the door. It can look the same way in relationships where you're praying about it, you're trying to discern, is this my person? Is this going to work out? And it doesn't work out. And 
we're, you know, so disappointed and so discouraged. But again, just know that closed doors are answers too. And I think um, over the time, like, you know, me not having a job, you working, um, our, us being real unconventional in a lot of different ways and typical relationships. Um, it's definitely encouraging though, you know, because it's like a testing of our faith. Uh, me and Shell, like not only in one another, but um, in God. And I think like sometimes God, you know, it takes a little time. He, wa he wants to prepare you for where he's taking you. But also he wants to make it known like, hey, look, this is for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no other way you could have done this except without me. And like my current situation right now definitely speaks to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, there came a point where, well, Aaron had already made the decision prior to leaving Teen Challenge that he wanted to pursue ministry school. And then um, as this kind of progressed, he learned more about what that would entail. And then he got the details on um, this internship that he was going to have to do as, as part of the first year and right. seeing and what the scary. internship. Yeah. I wouldn't have been seeking it so hardly like I was if I had a job mm -hmm. um, it would have been a lot more difficult for me to actually like put my focus in that area yeah and then when he actually got the details of the internship it clicked for us that like oh yes. this is gonna require so much that like it would be really hard to devote yourself to that and to work a job just because of you know what the internship looked like and actually sitting under the pastor and being with him during the day and stuff like that that was one of the first things that they asked him when the lead pastor called to let him know that he got the internship. Right. He was like, uh, so what you going to do about work? Because he's like, well, I actually don't have a job. So this is perfect. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that ended up working out with not having a job. is actually a supportive perfect. wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So that ended up working out um, very well. And even then, once he got the internship, we were like, okay, cool, understood. That's why God didn't ha didn't want you to have a job in that season. So let's start praying about the job that he wants you to have. And I think another thing is um, for those of you who are in a similar situation in your relationship, um, don't be discouraged, you know. <laughs> be hot. Let me, let me rephrase that. Um, be encouraged that your spouse is seeking to better themselves. You know, I think that for me, like it helped with Shell because she saw that I was actually pursuing something to get somewhere eventually. Like I wasn't making any money in this, you know, in the, that moment, but I was still pursuing something that was going to make my life better in the long run. Mm -hmm. And so like, let that be encouragement, you know, that if your um, significant other, your spouse is seeking something to better their life but they're mm -hmm. not necessarily where you'd like them to be they need your support and encouragement mm -hmm. yeah that's good that's good and so um got the answer for the internship cool very excited we still don't have a job <laughs> and so the next thing was okay well let's start praying for this internship to lead to a job or through this process we, got, to well, open we the started door. fasting at the beginning of the year yeah about 30 days and then we started fasting again for Lent, and I definitely like me not having a job allowed me to get up every morning and really like um, get my alone time and my prayer time and really see God, um, only for Him to reveal some things to show that that was pretty cool. Mm, yeah, and so this whole time we were because He's in ministry school and He know that He has a call on His life um, to ministry. That's what we're focused on. We're like, okay, how can we get a job with through this church with the internship or through the Christian school or through these Christian organizations yeah. in the city? At this point, like anything is an option, though we have our eyes kind of peeled over here to see what God might do. And then the uh, most <laughs> random thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> we're, going, we're going on a prayer walk. Um, so we're going on a mission trip in June to Ecuador uh, where I'm in, at the church I'm interning. Um, before that that was cool in itself i told shell i was like let's go to this meeting i said i babe we can up track uh it, it goes along with it <laughs> i told her let's go and i said god's gonna take care of it and he is but anyways through that um i've been doing mulching for missions called mulching for missions so i've been mulching a lot of houses and um 
chill knows, you know, I'm a, I'm a good handyman. I've been doing construction and landscape and um, lawn care, like, just forever. Um, and so we're going on a prayer walk, and Shell's like, you know what the Lord just revealed to me? She's like, babe, wh what? <laughs> oh, nothing. I was just telling them that they ain't had you, you did like this. You want it? You want it? No, I want you to tell it, but I don't understand why you like veered off over well, there and come back to talk about the prayer walk. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and then Shell was like, babe, why don't you start your own business? And I was like, okay. And it was crazy because I was like, okay, why not? You know, God didn't just supply a job because we were praying for me for a car and a job. He supplied a job that requires a truck. And man, oh man, like I told Michelle exactly what I wanted. And um, the guy that's a car salesman um, at our church, they just happened to have one on the lot. Two days later, I'm a proud owner of my dream truck. Like, mm -hmm. I, I was like, Lord to God. I was like, because we, and we had pulled some money out um, to go as the down payment for the truck. And so it was crazy because that morning I was like, Lord, I was like, I need a sign, God, like, help me. Like, how am I going to afford my equipment? You know, how am I going to afford this truck? Like, if you want me to have this, let me know. Because that is like, I couldn't have dreamed of a nicer truck. Like, I was just like blown away that God wanted me to have something like that. Um, anyways, not even an hour later after that prayer, uh, they called me and they're like, hey, you're approved for zero down. And so that way I was able to take the money that I was going to put on the down payment to use to buy the equipment um, to start my business. And it's been going really good. So <laughs> within like two days of Shell's revelation, I'm, I'm owning a truck. And then within like another week and a half, I got a trailer and a mower and all these things. And it, it was crazy to me because I told Shell, I was like, babe, what's your, what's your highlight of the week? She was like, the business idea, I think that was this week, right? And I was like, yeah, cause, but it's crazy because it felt like it was like a month's time. And I feel like when God starts moving, he can take a month's worth of work and effort and things and he can just like, just shrink it up into a few days. And it's just like, he was just knocking dominoes down, just boom, 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 boom. Um, wasn't no obstacles, no problems. Um, everything is just, falling in place and it's crazy because I never thought I never saw myself um doing this I never saw myself having my own business like this and that's why I say you know Shell bringing out the best in me um it's it's encouraging too um you know Shell's got we both love ministry but you know she's got the radical relationship which is really dear to her heart and God kind of giving me something you know that's kind of a little bit more um down my alley um, but we both still help each other in each thing. So it, that's really cool because Shell's good at like paperwork and um, computer and all that stuff. You know, I'm like, why am I getting a call from Shelby County? And Shell's, and Shell's like, hey, babe, I got your business license. And I was like, man, I was just like, praise God. I got an amazing <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah, so to backtrack a little bit. So during this entire time, Aaron had been jobless and carless. Yeah. And so with the car, we were just... I feel like the car thing was a more practical, like there were times that we went out looking at stuff like that, but we just didn't need to make that work at the time. So we were like, eh, hold off. We'll just keep praying about it. So the day that we went on the prayer walk and the random idea came to my mind about starting the business. I wasn't random. It was, it was God inspired. But, but I'm just saying like, it was random in that that had never been discussed before oh, as, yeah. as, P potentially an option and so um my point with that is that like we were just doing the same old things that we always do and seeking God about the answer so we were just being faithful and continuing to seek God about the answer keeping our eyes open but that day we were doing a prayer walk like we normally would and we were praying about the situations continuously putting it before God and then God Holy Spirit just downloaded literally an option that we had was not even on our radar not whatsoever. Close. And so I say that to say like, 
Um, the Bible tells us to keep on asking, to keep on knocking, and the door will be open for you. Um, it's a scripture in Matthew. I'll put it up here on the screen that teaches us about effective prayer. And so that diligence, that perseverance, that refusal to move and make a decision until we felt led by God to do so. We could have gone out and gotten a car. He could have continued to keep applying to jobs, but the intentionality of Okay, like this is what it feels like God is saying in this season. What does it just look like for us to surrender to that, to make it work? You know, seeing the positives, like Aaron just pointed out, like with the car, I work from home. It didn't matter that he didn't have a car. Honestly, we have to coordinate schedules more for the evening if I wanted to do something or if he had plans from that perspective. But even that we just saw as an opportunity to grow in our unity to grow and being on the same page, to grow in our communication. And so with that, I think that like, it's always important to know that perspective is everything. Perspective plays such a huge role in contentment because there's always going to be multiple ways that you can choose to look at what may feel like a less than ideal situation or what is a less than ideal situation. But it doesn't mean that you can't be content. Paul talks about learning to be yeah. content in every circumstance. And I truly do Ooh. think a part of that is because he had the most important thing, which was relationship with God. And so he's like, man, to serve a God, to be in relationship with this kind of God who I know has my back and I know who causes all things to work together for the good, I never lose. <laughs> Even if I'm in a less than ideal situation, I never lose. And so that's just our testimony that like it didn't always feel great. You know, there have been moments where we've both been frustrated by the circumstances and wanted an answer quicker than we have received. And then when the answer came, it's not even anything that was on our radar in our human yeah. nature. So, But the cool thing about it, too, is like instead of allowing it to cause like friction between us, we together just like saw God more. Yeah. Um, and just like really poured out our hearts because I, things like this can... They can create a lot of friction sometimes mm -hmm. in relationships, you know, when one feels like they're pulling all the weight. Um, and then, you know, they just, <laughs> but I, I can definitely say like us seeking God, like she said, you know, seek, 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 knock, knock, knock. And like, you yeah, know, uh, God's going to answer you, you know, and it's crazy because when God opens doors, woo -wee, let me tell you, he opens <laughs> doors and he <laughs> like, man. Yeah, for sure. I love that. So um, if you are someone who is having trouble discerning God's will for you in a certain area, definitely a great candidate for coaching. Um, and one of the reasons that I feel so strongly about that is because um, it's one thing to be trying to figure out and discern God's voice by yourself. We were lucky in that we were able to partner together and it worked out because we're married, but even for single people, like there are things that conversations that I have with my friends about like, here's, this is what I feel like God is saying, be praying with me. Like, is the Lord putting anything on your heart now that I've told you this? Um, be praying about it. See if the spirit speaks anything to you for me. So community is important. So oftentimes there are things that or tactics that Satan may use um towards you in order to keep something foggy that's actually probably really clear <laughs> but because you're trying to figure it figure it out alone you're having way more issues in figuring out this situation than you need to or discerning god's voice so if you find yourself in that situation whether it's directly related to a relationship or really anything in your life uh, certainly consider setting up a discovery call for some coaching and having someone come alongside you spiritually that can work with you to help you discern God's will for you in that thing. Mm. I'm reminded of uh, people say when God moves, he either is going to tell you to stop, to be still, or to go. And um, just an encouragement for those of you that are in a season of being still, because I feel like me and Shell mm -hmm. definitely since before we got married, that has been a very still season. <laughs> For sure. But through that still season, we didn't lose hope. We didn't get bitter. We continued just to press on, continue to see God and really pour our hearts out to him. And in return, man, 
like abundant and beyond what we could have dreamed. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nothing short of the glory of God. I, I think it's so cool. That's why I was like, I'm going to get a sticker to put on my truck. It says glory of God because like I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have that truck or any of these things if it wasn't for him. And like the just the perspective of that is mind blowing. Like mm -hmm. it's just crazy that these things that you don't even know how you're going to obtain and God makes mm -hmm. a way. And it's just like, dang. <laughs> yep. Yep. So hopefully that encourages someone. Hopefully that gives you some good perspective for any situation that you might be currently enduring. If that isn't you in this season, share this with a friend that you feel like could benefit from this message in this season of their lives as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. Bye. Until next time, folks, we are out. Bye, y'all.